All right, everyone, our next screencast for the World War II unit is the home front. And this is the time period directly following our entry into World War II on the Allies' side. So our learning outcomes, you should be able to assess the validity of the argument why Jewish immigrants on the St. Louis were denied entry to the United States. Secondly, describe the economic and social changes that reshaped American life during World War II. And lastly, describe what impact Torrance had on the war. Uh, we have a uh, distinct tie, actually a couple ties, uh, to uh, World War II. So let's get this thing started. Jewish refugees, 40,000 refugees are already in France. France does not want any more. Um, now this is prior to the Nazis taking over uh, in that area. The United States, we only want to take people of exceptional merit, guys like Einstein. Einstein had immigrated long before this whole problem had uh, issue of war had happened uh, or began in Europe. And also guys like Thomas Mann. Uh, again, people of exceptional merit. The cream of the crop, if you want to call it that. Not just Joe everybody uh, that are just regular people. The St. Louis is an ocean liner that has over or close to a thousand uh, Jewish people on it. Uh, 943 of them are turned away by the U.S. Coast Guard. 740 of them had uh, immigration papers that were in order that should have allowed them entry into the United States. Uh, this ocean liner gets turned around again by the uh, Coast Guard, and then the majority of these people that were on the St. Louis end up dying in various concentration camps throughout the war. So um, it's interesting to, to think of the responsibility, perhaps, if you want to call it that, that the United States should have taken these people. Um, and it's up to you to kind of decide if the blood is on uh, the United States' hands partially because of the turning of uh, turning away of the ship. New opportunities. World War II has provided economic opportunities for millions of people. Unemployment is down to 1.2%, one of the lowest, probably the lowest that we've ever seen, almost 100% employment. Farm production is up 50%. Their income is tripling, uh, very much like it was during World War I. We see the, the need for crops and for food uh, skyrocketing. Population is going to shift once again. Uh, more people are moving out of the rural areas into towns and cities, uh, doubling and tripling populations, and there is a second mass African-American migration. Uh, they're going to be working in mainly the aviation industry, but other various wartime industries, again, moving out of the south and more into the northeast, and also big parts of big population shift out here west in California. Um, marriages are on the rise big time at this point. A lot of people are getting married right pri right before they're going to be shipping off, similar to probably what you've seen uh, throughout the last five or ten years over um, what's been going on with Iraq and Afghanistan. We are emerging as the dominant economic and military power. Surprising, right? We've kind of already been showing this and showed this throughout World War I. Uh, here is the African-American migration from 1940 to 1950 in these war years. Uh, almost 300,000 people come out to the West Coast. Um, more so, the biggest impact here is the negative number for the South. They're losing 1.2 million African Americans. Uh, half a million are moving up to the Midwest. Again, almost 400,000 to this Mid-Atlantic area, and then uh, close to 25,000 in the New England area. Most of these people here in the 283,000 that are coming out to west to the West Coast are going to be settling in Southern California, uh, out here in Los Angeles and Long Beach to work in the aviation industry. If you've ever gone down to Long Beach and seen the big Boeing uh, area, that's what we're talking about. Uh, here is a uh, war poster. The girl he left behind is still behind him. She's a WOW woman ordinance worker. Uh, basically, uh, to me, she, she's like a you know a more traditional Rosie the Riveter kind of a look here. Uh, here's another wartime poster for women. Women in the war, we can't win without them. Again, they're moving into that into the war production, into the welding, into the production of ammunitions and all sorts of things. We have to rely on them because the men are out fighting for us. Here's another one, another, again, traditional blue kind of jumpsuit with the uh, hair the hair pull back and the, I don't know what you want to call that, hat, uh, do the job he left behind, apply for U.S. employment service, again, uh, building planes, riveting on, uh, welding, all sorts of stuff. And again, the traditional Rosie the Riveter, again, very similar uh, in style there. Also, what this is going to show a lot of these people that are here at home is 
examples like this. Uh, Twice a Patriot ex-private Obi Bartlett lost left arm at Pearl Harbor, released December 1941, now at work welding in a West Coast shipyard, that even someone who has lost a limb is still contributing to the war effort. And he's quoted down here at the bottom, sometimes I feel my job here is as important as the one I had to leave. If we don't have the production, we're not going to come close to having the materials necessary to win. Now the GI Bill. The GI Bill is going to help uh, veterans transition back to civilian life. This is towards the end of the war now. Uh, it's going to provide education and training, which is going to be provided by the government. And then, uh, um, weirdly, only about half of the soldiers that are coming back from World War II are going to attend college or tech school and take advantage of the GI Bill. One thing that they did take advantage of is providing the federal loans and taking the federal loans that the government is going to give us to help buy homes and farms after the war. We're going to see this in kind of the, the boom of the 1950s of the suburb is because of this GI Bill. Uh, here's a couple little pictures here. Shall I go back to school? Uh, and then also a stamp showing the GI Bill in 1944 of the soldier uh, working. Now, combat heroes. These are people that we don't really get a lot of information about. Your textbook doesn't give a lot of information about them. Um, we more so see them now uh, in movies. Uh, the Tuskegee Airmen, they're part of Operation Torch in North Africa. They're in part of one of the very first victories against the enemy aircraft uh, in North Africa before they move on to Italy. The 442nd All Nisei Regiment, these are Japanese. Again, families that are uh, families of these people are interned, either at Manzanar or other uh, various internment camps. Uh, the, the 442nd is the most decorated in history. And then also the Code Talkers, uh, 400 Native American Marines. These are more so people that were, uh, these Navajo were used in the Pacific Theater. The reason that they were used was because the Navajo language is not written. It's completely verbal. And there is only there's less than like 30 people that are not Navajo that could understand the language. So there was just simply no way for the Japanese to try and break these codes. Um, you maybe have heard them uh, referred to as wind talkers. Now Ted Tanaway, one of the local heroes for Torrance, he's a 1938 Torrance High graduate. He joins the 442nd after his family is interned in the a couple of the Arkansas internment camps. He goes overseas, and he gets injured. Uh, um, a mine goes off. He gets injured. He's in the infirmary. He goes back out into service, and again, he is attacked, and unfortunately, he does uh, pass away, uh, buried there in Italy. He's posthumously awarded the Distinguished Service Cross. In 2000, it was upgraded to the Medal of Honor. Uh, his family has since exhumed the body and moved him back here to uh, to California. He was memor uh, memorialized in 2004 at Torrance High School. You may be seeing this. It's across uh, from the, the front building there. Uh, and there's a flagpole that is uh, going up from this area. Zamperini, also Torrance High graduate. Uh, he's an Olympian. Uh, he was an Air Force veteran from 41 to 45. He was a POW from 1943 onwards. Uh, his plane went down over the Pacific. Uh, he floated uh, for like a month. Um, him and his, a couple of his crewmates get found by Japanese soldiers and basically declared dead by his friends and family here in Torrance. Uh, the airfield was named after him, and this guy is a local hero. Um, he was one of the. He was the guy that was thought to going thought to be breaking the four-minute mile. I mean, he, the, Olymp, uh, the Olympic side of it in Germany in 1932, uh, the Olympic side of it, he met Hitler, shook his hand. It's incredible. Uh, basically, he said track and field saved his life, uh, gave him the resiliency. Uh, there is a book out on his life. It's called Unbroken. There's going to be a movie also made about it. It's going to come out you know, Christmas 2014. So I'll recap, you should be able to assess the validity of the argument why Jewish immigrants on the St. Louis were denied entry. Was it right? Uh, because we only wanted people with exceptional merit. We didn't want to get more involved in the situation at that point. Uh, describe the economic and social changes that reshaped American life during World War II. We have the GI Bill. We have the women going back into the war, uh, marriages on the rise, and also the impact that Torrance had on World War II. We had, showed you a couple guys with Ted Tanaway and Louis Zamperini. So if you have any questions, send me an email, let me know. Thank you for watching. I'm out.